So at the American Society of Clinical Oncology meeting, we presented the results of our phase three study of PROSTVAC, or PSA TRICOM. This agent was co-developed with uh, the National Cancer Institute, where I work, as well as with uh, industry partners. What we found in initial studies was that this agent was safe to give. It is a uh, pox viral based vaccine where vaccinia virus is given as the same as the priming vaccine. Vaccinia is the same virus that's been used in the worldwide eradication of smallpox. So it is, has a very good safety profile. It's been given to over a billion people worldwide. What we did was we engineered this virus to express PSA so that we could then get the immune system to recognize PSA uh, producing cells and, and attack them. But in addition to PSA, we had the genes for three different human T-cell co-stimulatory molecules. Now, the same genes are put into the boosting vector, which is Falpox, a similar virus, with the idea that this is an off-the-shelf based vaccine that can be just taken out of the freezer thawed and injected into patients. Preliminary data showed that this uh, virus was safe to give in advanced patient populations. And when we gave it in a randomized phase two study, there was a suggestion of improvement in overall survival of about eight and a half months. That was a secondary endpoint of the study. So we decided to do a randomized phase three trial to see if we could get the improvement in overall survival. This trial was designed before the current era of new agents approved in prostate cancer. And so the, um, there was only one approved therapy at the time this trial was designed, and that was docetaxel. That was the only therapy that showed improvement in overall survival. What we did was we enrolled 1,297 patients into this study, randomized between three arms, either vaccine with uh, GMCSF, vaccine with placebo uh, for the GMCSF, and empty vector, which we gave basically just the Falpox virus without the PSA in the TRICOM, um, and, and um, a placebo for the GMCSF. And we looked at the patients, um, we, we gave them a series of vaccines out for five months, seven vaccines over five months, and then we follow the patients for overall survival. After the vaccines, they could go on to get any other therapy, um, and we followed which therapies they got over that next two-year period. What we found was that there was no change in survival in these patients, between the, two, the three arms, rather, and that there was no difference in terms of the uh, proportion of patients progressing by six months. So unfortunately, there was no evidence that there was clinical effect with this vaccine alone. However, the question remains, was there biologic effect? And so in two posters that we presented at the American Society of Clinical Oncology meeting, we found that there was evidence of biologic effect. First poster we looked at was a subcutaneous vaccination and, and then looking at uh, a prostatectomy. So these were in patients with localized disease. We looked at the biopsy specimen, compared that with a prostatectomy specimen, and what we found was that there was actually a, a increase in the number of immune cells that w got to the prostate tumor, um, either inside the tumor or at the tumor normal interface. And this is important because it suggests that, yes, you can get an immune response against PSA, and it can allow those cells to recognize the tumor and get to the tumor. The question is, why aren't they functional within the tumor microenvironment? Why aren't they killing the tumor cells and, and causing a better clinical response? Well, we got potential early results from another study where we looked in the metastatic setting, gave this vaccine along with an immune checkpoint inhibitor, we do know that if you get activated T cells in the tumor, you can cause gamma interferon secretion by those T cells, which can cause upregulation of PDL1. And that will just have the T cells halt. And so if you can block that, you can potentially allow those T cells to work. And so in this study, 12 patients were enrolled in the metastatic setting, and we found that there was a, a dramatic increase in um, a per, uh, let me back up. Mm -hmm. 
In that study, we found that there were two patients that had a phenomenal response that remains uh, ongoing at this time with PSA declines to undetectable uh, or very low in two of the patients, about a 90 to 99 percent decrease in the PSA with objective responses seen. The other patients did not have, there were two patients that had slight de decreases in their PSA that were a little bit more transient. Um, the remainder of the patients had either stable disease or progressive disease. So we think that this combination has utility in patients with prostate cancer, but perhaps needs additional targeting of the negative milieu within the tumor microenvironment.